So the CIA says that Russia did, in fact, attempt to sway the U.S. presidential election in favor of Donald Trump. And while most of the media is taking that statement as fact, we're pushing back and looking at at least five problems with this claim. This is a reality check you won't see anywhere else. Well, by now you've heard that the CIA is sure that Russia did hack the DNC and John Podesta's emails with the intent of swaying the election toward Donald Trump. And predictably, here's how some politicians have responded. The Russians are not our friends. It defies belief that somehow Republicans in the Senate are reluctant to either review Russian tactics or ignore them. Our men and women in the intelligence community um, who gather and assess intelligence are, are very careful and very deliberate. And if they weren't, they wouldn't be in the positions that they occupy. But what most media isn't doing is actually asking for evidence of these claims. I'm going to give you five problems with what the CIA is saying. Problem number one, how the information was released in the first place. Because the CIA did not officially release this information. Rather, anonymous sources inside the CIA leaked this conclusion to the Washington Post on Friday. And then another anonymous source leaked the same conclusion to the New York Times. From the Post, the CIA has concluded in a secret assessment that Russia intervened in the 2016 election to help Donald Trump win the presidency, rather than just undermine confidence in the U.S. electoral system. The Post goes on to report this. Intelligence agencies have identified individuals with connections to the Russian government who provided WikiLeaks with thousands of hacked emails and both the DNC and John Podesta's email accounts. So here's the second problem here. These anonymous sources, well, they did not provide any evidence to support those statements. And by releasing the information anonymously, there's no one accountable to provide that proof. The third problem here, the CIA lies. Maybe this should have been the first problem. Not always, but I can give you a number of recent stories where that agency has made claims that have been proven untrue. There are many public examples, but just two recent ones. The Senate Intelligence Committee blasted the CIA in 2014 for an ongoing, quote, culture of misinformation, which they said has undermined the public's trust in America's intelligence leadership. Also, Democratic Senator Ron Wyden of Oregon said that, quote, that trust has been seriously undermined by senior officials' reckless reliance on secret interpretations of the law and battered by years of misleading and deceptive practices within the CIA. And what about that huge Senate report on CIA torture practices? Remember this? It was a four-year, $40 million Senate report. It found that the CIA repeatedly lied about brutal techniques in the years after 9-11. So please excuse us if the public needs the CIA to do more than just leak anonymously its conclusion that Russia tried to sway the election. Oh, and by the way, the fourth problem here, even according to the Post article, those CIA investigators, they haven't even come to an agreement on the conclusion. Again, from the Post, there were minor disagreements among intelligence officials about the agency's assessment, in part because some questions remain unanswered. Well, what does that mean? What are those disagreements? And without providing that information, how can we trust that these disagreements are actually minor, since that's, of course, a relative term? And that leads us to our fifth problem. The fact that repeatedly Julian Assange, the founder of WikiLeaks, has said that the DNC leak was not a hack. It was information leaked to WikiLeaks from someone inside the DNC. Well, only days ago, a former British ambassador to Uzbekistan, Craig Murray, said that he has met the person who gave the DNC emails to Assange and to WikiLeaks, and he says it is not the Russians. Quote, I know who leaked them, Murray told the UK Guardian. I've met the person who leaked them, and they are certainly not Russian, and it's an insider. It's a leak, not a hack. The two are different things. So what you need to know is that on top of all of these questions is one fundamental issue that everyone is missing. The claim is that Russia decided to hack the election not by altering voting results, but by making public actual emails from the Clinton campaign and the DNC. Look, I have said this before and I will say it again. How bizarre is it that the argument is not that the Russians were trying to influence the election through lies or electronic voting, but rather the claim, if you really boil it down, is that the Russians swayed the election for Donald Trump by revealing the truth about the Clinton campaign and the truth about the DNC. That's Reality Check. Let's talk about that on Twitter.